Alrighty guys, so in this video, this is going to be part one of a two-part series. We're going to be taking apart this PS1 to build a Pi 3 case for our Pi image. We will be using the original PS1 controller ports, so we're going to dive in and look at that at a moment. But first order of business would be removing these six screws. But let me show you the controller actually working with the original connection. So taking a look at it right here, this is just a little test run showing you the controller functions. It's a little soldering action, but she does work. So let's get right back into business and start opening up this bad boy. So there is a hidden screw that we are going to have to either peel the sticker off or cut open the little hole there. I typically just cut a little circle out. That way I'm not pulling off the whole sticker. So we go ahead and peel that off and then start unscrewing these screws. Now that we got them out, let's go ahead and open her up. She just comes right apart. We are going to have our disk drive on the top that we're going to have to disconnect. It's held by, by a piece of tape and the ribbon cable here. So you go ahead and pull that tab out. And then we do have a little quick connection there. We're going to have to pull out, get it off of that tape. Good to go. Get the little metal casing out. Then we do have the main package here. She just comes right on out. Underneath that, or actually real quick, we do have some of the parts we're gonna need at some point that we're gonna desolder the power button, get that guy out of there and get our controller connections desoldered and out. So there's quite a few connections that gotta be desoldered you can break them if you want, as long as you're not breaking the main nine ones that are for the uh, controller. So underneath, we'll go ahead and get that little metal sheet out. Looking good. And we do have these tabs. We will want to cut those out. Choose your little clippers. Snip all those little bad boys out. They don't need to be in there. They're just going to get in the way. We'll have a couple of them on the, the top piece as well that we're going to want to snip them off. As long as you're making sure you're not snipping any of the pieces with the uh, that that the screws go through, you'll be fine. But any of those guys in the middle there, you just got to get them out. And then right here, you might want to, I usually do, I'll cut out part of the CD tray a little bit so I have more access to the system. Our little power button, we are going to use the original power button that's on the, the board. Okay, so now taking a look at her, you know, I'd already pre-set up one of the original control inputs using a soldering iron to get all the connections good. But taking a look at the board, we are going to have to remove these, these points. There's nine of them, so the, the row that there's nine is the row that you really got to be careful with to make sure they're out good. And then for the power button, if you want to use the same power button off of the, the board here, there's four connections that you're going to have to desolder. Now, I'm not a professional, you know, with a soldering iron or anything like that. But with this guy, just want to kind of warm up the solder a little bit around the connections to where it loosens up and you can kind of wiggle it out. Um, you don't want to break those connections, so you got to be real careful. And like I said, I'm no professional, um, but it's not, not too hard to do. You just want to kind of weaken the solder that's on there. That way you can wiggle that bad boy out of there. Might take a little work, but it's worth it. Now we got that guy out of there. 
You're only gonna need two connections on the side of this, and he will fit in this little square spot. We'll probably use some hot glue to fix him in there once we uh, wire him up. So in the meantime, to get him set up, let's get any kind of wires you got. Any arcade type wiring will work. Just wanna snip the ends off. Strip them down a bit, you know, a good, you know, for me, I'm doing, you know, three quarters of an inch or so. You know, you could use wire strippers, but I'm just kind of barely clipping them with the clippers and then pulling them off. Can be a struggle if you do it the way I do it. Then we'll go ahead and twist them. I like to twist them that way they the threads stay in place. And then we will go ahead, wrap them around those leads. Now that we got them wrapped around fairly well, I'm gonna wanna throw a little solder on there. Like I said previously, I am no expert at soldering, so please don't make fun of me, but it all works out in the end. You can make fun of me if you want, it's all right. But we'll just go ahead and you know put a little solder on the connections just to kind of reinforce them, keep them in place so they don't fall apart or slip off, because just wrapping them around is not gonna be good enough. They will slide off. Make sure we do both sides. Be careful with that soldering iron. She is hot. So we got her on there. Both of our connections, make sure they're not, you know, there's no bare metal touching any of the other sides. Now let's get our LED light set up. Similar process to doing the button, but if you're going to use one of these connections for like an arcade button, you're going to want to trim off this plastic just so you can separate the connections because these two connections are not going to be right next to each other on the GPIO. But the little metal tabs that are inside there will fit on the GPIO just fine, so they'll stay in place. We just want to trim that plastic off, remove it. Get that bad boy out of there. Be careful not to accidentally break the connection. Now, those are the connections we're going to add to the GPIO, so it's going to be the opposite side. I have quick disconnects on here for you know, like buttons or whatever for arcade sticks, but I'm not gonna strip these. You can definitely strip them and then just twist your wire on there and then use electrical tape, solder it or whatever. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take the, the connection from the LED, put it through the quick disconnect and wrap around it and then kind of snip it down a little bit. Later on, I did add solder to this and then a little bit of electrical tape. Put the solder on there to just kind of reinforce the connection and an electrical tape to keep everything from touching anything else. So that's just like the quick little ghetto way of doing it. Definitely do it a little more professional. I'm just using a bunch of spare crap that I got lying around, so it works. But you can definitely change this process a little bit if you like. Or just follow what I'm doing. Doing it real quick like and using spare parts. So, like I said, I went ahead and snipped the quick disconnects down just a little bit. Retightened that, that wiring from the LED. Wrapped it around that bad boy. Got them on there nice and snug. Kind of tight, tightened them up a little bit. And there we go. 
bad boy's ready to go. Like I said, you can add a little solder, put some electrical tape around it. I did do that after the fact, but essentially it's ready to go. So the last bit I want to talk about before we end part one here is, you know, I'm not going to show all the soldering for this because it's, it's long and boring, but you're going to have nine connections on the, the controller connector. There's going to be another series of connections. That's for the memory card reader. You can just snip those off. But you will line up your controller input this way and then solder on wiring to each connection, making sure you're mimicking the right ones, getting them both next to each other. And then, like I mentioned in the beginning, there are these little tabs you want to kind of clip off of the case. Just use these little cheap clippers to get them off. Come off fairly easily unless you have dull clippers. But that's pretty much it for the setup of getting this, this guy ready to go. So essentially get everything clipped out, all the little extra tabs. Make sure you're not clipping off the tabs that the screws go through. Get our power button and our controller inputs desoldered off of the, uh, the board. And then get our light set up, our little LED. Get our power button ready to go. Get our control ports ready to go. That way this this system looks seamless and as authentic as possible because we do want to just plug our controllers straight into the system with it looking like it's still the same system. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. You know, a little rough and rugged tutorial. We will have part two, which is going to be the assembly of this guy. So with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you. Boom.